If you are a totally obsessed tennis player and you want perfect technique on your forehand ground stroke, I have good news for you. It comes down to training and not talent. Now, I repeat that. If you would like to develop perfect, flawless technique, anybody in the world can do it. It comes down to training and not talent. And I'm going to prove it to you in this video, and I'm going to show you the system at how you can do this 100% on your own. Why 100% on your own? Because first of all, those are the people who achieve greatness at every level. Whether you are a recreational player, a, a, an aspiring junior, a college player, or a professional player, the ones who get the most out of their body and their talent are the ones who do it by themselves. Think about the famous stories of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan being the first ones to the gym and the last ones to leave. That's what we're talking about. And so many tennis players who come train with me, and by the way, if you do want to train with me, you watch this video and you get inspired and you want me to take a look at your game, you can go below in the description box and you click the link and you can train with me either here in Atlanta or you can go out to Cincinnati Open with me or you can travel around the world with me. If you're interested in training with me and seeing the world, Go to the link below. But if you want this perfect technique, many people say, you know, I really just can't practice the way I want to because I can't find a practice partner. No one will play with me. All they want to do is play matches, and so I can't get better. Again, get rid of the excuses. Push them away. You can do this 100% on your own. In fact, it's better to do it on your own. Why do I say that? The biggest mistake we make as tennis players is we play tennis. What? Yes, I said it. The biggest mistake you've made the first day out on the court is you took this tennis ball and you decided to start playing tennis. And by doing that, guess what you did on day one? You started to develop bad habits on your forehand, bad habits on your backhand. You started to do that from day one, right? Why? Because this ball, there's no telling what this ball is going to do. It's going to bounce super high. It's going to go low. It's going to skid on you. It's going to go fast. It's going to go slow. And if you don't have perfect technique, what are you going to do right away? You're going to go into survival mode. And then once you start going into survival mode, guess what you start to do? You start to develop bad habits. And once you start to develop bad habits, you know what they say about bad habits? They're hard to kill. They stay. They're there like weeds. You got to keep chopping them down. They keep coming back. So you're probably thinking, Pete, how are we going to become a better tennis player by not playing tennis? So don't take that literally, but here's the point I'm trying to make. If you want to become a better tennis player and develop perfect technique on your forehand, that's what we're going to teach you how to do today, develop perfect technique on your forehand, you need to start looking at the game of tennis as an art form, as a dance, or even better yet, what I like is to compare it to another sport, martial arts. If you're going to take a karate class, you don't walk into the class on day one and go, okay, I signed up, coach. Uh, who do I fight right now? I'm ready to fight. No, you go, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know really how to fight, especially when it comes to karate. I understand it's an art form. I understand there's certain moves I need to perfect first and different progressions I need to go through and belts I need to do and tests I need to pass before you're going to let me have someone in front of me and fight them. You, that's normal to you. But if you walk into a club and you see a basket of balls here and then the club says, well, sorry, since you're new, we're not going to let you use these tennis balls and, and hit with them. You'd be like, OK, I'll go to the next club, you know, because you basically dictate the market. So when you walk into a tennis club or you're signed up for a tennis lesson, you want to hit these darn balls. You want to hit them, right? But as soon as you do that, you're killing your technique. Does that make sense? The best example, if you watch my videos, you probably already know where I'm going with this. The best example I can tell you to show you how effective it can be to work on tennis like it's a martial art and to work on your moves. What are moves? They're shadow swings. They're developing each move piece by piece perfectly. So by the time a ball actually gets in your way, just like if a human got in your way and you were in karate, you would actually execute it at a high level. You would execute that forehand at a high level. So the movie King Richard, those ladies looked very good. They actually looked like Venus and Serena when they hit the ball. They had never played tennis before. How did they make this happen? How did they give those young ladies really nice technique on their forehand? 
they had them hit shadow strokes for two and a half months before they hit a tennis ball. Now that only makes sense, right? If there's no ball there and somebody who's an expert is there working with you for hours a day and showing you each piece of the puzzle, you should be able to do that. Because again, I said it takes training, not talent. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now by one simple thing. Whenever I run a clinic, and I'm gonna show some video, I will not show people's face just to protect my totally obsessed tennis players. I'm gonna show you some video of people getting ready to hit forehands. And one of the things that always is noticeable is that the offhand is always very weak. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's pointing there, often it's bent in some way. It just looks awkward, okay? But when you watch every single pro get ready, or maybe you're teaching pro at your club, or the hotshot juniors at your club, you see this often, right? You see this offhand, it's very strong, it's very pronounced, it looks good. How do we know this looks good? Because this is what we see at a high level. This takes training, guys. This isn't a talented move. All I'm doing is basically taking my arm, pulling it across like I'm gonna stretch, and holding the arm straight with zero bend in it. I'm pretty sure if any of you stood up right now in front of the video, in fact, I, I challenge you to do so, and stand up, get a little bit of a bend, and pull your arm across, right? And now get your arm, now all of a sudden you look like a much te better tennis player than you probably have in years. Again, that takes training, not talent. This is the kind of training you're not willing to do. So the, the process of developing a perfect forehand technique by yourself, first of all, is shadow strokes. And I'm just gonna walk you through it real quick. And then I'm gonna show you also a really cool tool you can use so this is a lot of fun because I realize for a lot of you, shadow strokes are like eating broccoli. It's like, yes, I know it's good for me, but I don't wanna do it. But yet, you, you claim you're totally obsessed and you want perfect technique on your forehand. I'm just saying. So, how would you do it? First of all, let's just start off with the most popular grip on the tour. That's the semi-Western grip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the semi-Western grip by this. You're gonna drop the racket, you're gonna pick the racket up, you're gonna be holding it in a frying pan position. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to hold yourself in a ready position. I want you to place the racket in your non-dominant hand and hold it by the throat up here. And then I want you to bend down low, a slight bend in your elbow, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into unit turn. To do the unit turn, all we're gonna do is turn our toes this way, right there, and then we're just gonna place the racket down from there and hold that racket out and just doing this over and over again, getting good at this move before even worrying about even doing the swing because you're probably already, what's next, what's next? Do this 30 times in a row today. Just try it and see how good you get at this first move, right? 30 times in a row. Pivot, get ready. Pivot, get ready, okay? Get that mastered. Now, once you get here, you're loaded. You're loaded on this back leg and what we want is the energy, the hip energy, is going to make the racket move. It's not the arm. Too many people arm the ball. So what you want to do is start to initiate your hip into your forward step. So you're going to transfer the weight from back to front. The energy is going to shoot from the back glute into the hip and just relax on the front leg. And when you do that, it's going to have the racket shoot behind. The racket's going to be the last thing to leave the station. And that's gonna initiate that racket lag that people talk about, which should happen naturally in a relaxed position. So what you're here, you're here, and I shoot the hip, and then I just let the racket relax back and down, and then I'm going to swing. And the more you can include both hands in this, I like to call this the love story, to where this is the female, this is the male, and it's the traditional love story to where the female is playing hard to get, the male is chasing, and then they catch each other at the end. So it's gonna look like this all together. And you just wanna do that over and over again, and you want to video yourself. So as you're doing this, you're videoing yourself, and then you're analyzing your swing and asking yourself, is that ball going to go in the court, or are you missing? What pieces do you like about your swing, and what do you not like? Now, if you want to improve your technique 
the way you watch the ball, and your timing. One thing that's going to make shadow strokes extremely fun, because I realize for many people it's not fun, is first of all, you want to get yourself an Oculus. These are a lot of fun as well. And then what you want to do is you want to go down the description box below or in the card section. It's either up there or over there. You want to go in that card section and you want to get yourself one of these true tennis VR rackets, which when you hold it, it feels like a real tennis racket. I know the grip looks real, but maybe as we get up here to the controller, it doesn't look real. But once you put this on, all of a sudden you see a tennis racket right in your hand. And the weight feels just like a tennis racket. It's really, really high quality made. It's really, really good stuff. And then what you can do is you can have the ball come at you and you can do all kinds of exercise. You can do a warm up routine. You can work on your forehand. You can work on your backhand. You can be playing on clay, grass, hard court. You can have the ball come fast, slow. You can hit toss and you can hit slice. But since we're working on your toss and forehand, what you want to do is you want to go in the true tennis VR world and then you want to film yourself. And as you're hitting, you want to analyze your technique. It's, it's kind of interesting, and I'm, not gonna, I'm only going to show the lady with a good technique, but, and I'm going to show myself, but it's your stroke. It will tell you a lot about your technique when you put this on and you film yourself because there's only a couple of people I've had put this on. When they go to swing, they look really good. Most people, their bad habits are very apparent when they put this on and they go to swing. So this way you can start to develop really good shadow stroke technique and have a blast doing it, plus you're improving your, the way you're watching the ball and your timing because you've got to hit the ball at the right time and have the rat, right racket at awareness so the ball goes in with the correct spin and depth and everything you're trying to do. It's pretty awesome. The next thing you want to do is you want to take out your favorite basket of balls. Remember, we're learning how to do the perfect forehand technique all by yourself. You don't need a partner. So get yourself some tennis balls and you work on your picture-perfect technique. This is really going to help you with your balance, your racket at awareness, because you're going to see where the ball is going, everything, your preparation. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get your tennis ball. You're going to get yourself in your unit turn already. Make sure you got the right grip. You're going to put the ball out in front. Make sure you use that non-dominant hand and that you are in the open option, meaning that I want your hitting side, I want it open. I don't want you closed. Lots of people will do swings like this when they bounce the ball to themselves. That's not it. What we want to do is we want to be here. We want to put the ball out there, swing, catch that ball through. And you want to be able to stay here for days. That lets me know that it's picture perfect. I actually saw Uncle Tony do this drill, this exact drill, as he was just hand feeding. This is called a closed practice environment, very controlled. This then little hand feed right next to her. She was a great tennis player, but she had to hold her finish until Uncle Tony said, okay, now you can relax and be ready for the next ball. So this is a way, again, you develop that balance. So once you start running and moving, you've got that solid base. You have those fundamentals. You have the balance. Tennis at a high level is a game of balance. Once you get thrown off balance, this is where unforced errors are going to come in. This is where you're going to feed up short balls. So again, we're getting set here. We put the ball out here. We want to do a picture perfect finish and we want to feel balanced for a long time. I like a minimum of a three count. Notice how my back toe is up right here. I call this the dry range finish. So you want to do that next. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out a ball machine. If you are going to practice by yourself, I do recommend that you either belong to a club, a park that has a ball machine that you can rent, or you go out and you buy yourself a ball machine. I like to use the Slinger Bag. I'm not saying Slinger Bag is the only ball machine out there, but it's the one I like to use. It's very easy to wheel to the court. So you can see myself practicing on the Slinger Bag as I'm hitting these ground strokes. So that's what you want to do next. And this is where you start to really work on your footwork, working on your shuffling and your recovery and you want to start to set targets. Then finally, the last thing you want to do as you're doing this is you want to put yourself under pressure with your practice. So what you want to do to end practice is then you want to say, okay, now I've got to make, you know, eight out of 10 cross court, pass the service line in the singles box because that cross court shot is one you want to really master. You want to do that. And then when you, when you accomplish that, then you're like, okay, good job. If you don't accomplish that, say, I'm not going to leave until I get it. Or if I don't get it this round, I'm going to do a sprint. You want to put some kind of pressure on yourself. And if you do this over and over again and you rinse and repeat, and then you're able to go out there and, 
and play with a friend, whether you're playing practice matches or your league matches or you just get to rally with somebody every once in a while, if you do this over and over again, you can develop perfect technique all by yourself. Now, if you find that you want and need extra help, I have cool things that you can do. Number one is you can train with me. So look at the link below. You can train with me, no problem. Number two, another thing you can do is you can do my challenges because I basically take you through these step-by-step -step progressions. And I'm there with you every step of the way. And the first challenge you can sign up for to get you started is, and I have a forehand challenge, I have a backhand challenge, I have double specialty shot. I've got a ton of challenges, fitness challenges, but everybody finds the serve challenging. So you can sign up for my serve challenge right now, 100% free. And that's it, guys. I hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made a lot of sense to you. If it did, please give this video a like. If you're watching this video till the end and you're still watching it, please give this video a like on the way out. And if you've never seen one of my videos before and you want to make sure you see one again, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you guys on the next video.